Look, I love that one Finity machine, but that is too close for comfort. We're gonna do something about it. We're gonna do what the guys down here do with the pickup trucks. We're, We're gonna, gonna jack, jack this, this thing, thing up. up. We're gonna, We're gonna lift, lift it. it. Just a quarter of an inch, but nonetheless, it's going up in the air. And if I can't lift it, my bad AF son can. I'm gonna pull these screws because I need to know how big to make the holes in the spacer. And with that, we're going to use the Bamboo Labs printer to create some plastic spacers that won't swell or move. Let's put the screw back and get to it. Show you how easy it is once you get the general idea of Tinkercad to make all kinds of uh, basic objects. So here we got our work area. The first thing we need to do is create a, a square box. To do that, we obviously grab the box and drag it in. Left click to drag it in. And then we can click on these squares to size it. By clicking on those squares, we get a little fly out and it tells us what size it is now. So right now it's a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter box. And I need a box that is, uh, what do I need? I need a 61 millimeter wide box. Click enter. And I need a box that's 104 inches long. Inches, not inches, millimeters. 104 millimeters. So there we have our box. Let's left click and drag him back into the work area a little bit. Let's rotate up by pushing down on the right mouse key. And if we grab this guy, we can move this box up and down. This number indicates the height of the box off of the work plane. We want that on the work plane, so we'll push zero and enter, and it puts it on the work plane. So now we have our box, and by the way, I've oversized this box by one millimeter on all dimensions because I'm going to create a one millimeter border on the inside of this so that the um, shoe on the Onefinity will sit down into a little shelf and kind of hold the, hold the shim where I want it. So to create that little recess, if you will, we go over here to this box, which looks like um, just a box with stripes, but it's actually a hole. They call it a hollow. Pushing down on the left mouse to rotate a little bit. Right mouse, sorry. Click on these boxes and we're going to resize it. Now we want a one inch border all the way around. So the dimensions then are one millimeter less than the red box. The red box was 61. We need 59 by 102. 102 in this number and 59 on this number. And that gives us the box capers please that we need to put over top of this one now how do we get it dead center that's rather simple highlight them both by left click and drag then we go up here to this tool It is the align tool click on that you'll get all of these dots and if you hover over the dots it'll show you what's going to happen when you click the dots as you can see. click the dots yes it's going to move the box into different positions so I want it center of the red box so we push this one that aligns them in that way. I'll rotate a little bit and we'll click on, uh, let's see, let's click on this one and it puts them in line where they belong. Now I want this whole box to drop down into this red one millimeter. Click off of everything, click on just the top one, click the arrow that lifts it and lowers it, and that gives you the dimension over here. By the way, we missed a step. Let's, let's correct that right now. Clicking on the red box, I only want to raise the Onefinity one quarter of an inch, but I need this to be 7.35 millimeters, which is one millimeter taller than a quarter of an inch. So we'll click here. Click here and go 7.35, and as you can see, it shrunk the box to what I need. Now we'll click on the hollow, and we'll move it up and down so that I can get this dimension. This one needs to be one millimeter less, so 6.35 enter and it drops that box into the first box and now we're going to cut that out and as you can almost see along the edges here you can see that this box is sitting inside the red one how do we cut it out that's very simple 
highlight them both, get them both active, and go up here to the group or weld tool as I call it. Click on that and as you can see now it's cut that out and created the little border that I want all the way around. Next step is to punch some holes in this thing and that's done with a whole lot of math. I've already done the numbers. I'm not going to figure all that out in front of you. I'll just tell you what those numbers are and I'll give you some other little tricks here as I go along. So keep watching. So we had a square tool that creates a square hole. We got a round tool now that creates a round tool. We drag that in. Now I need this guy to be a seven millimeter hole. We click on these boxes again to activate them so that I can change the size of this circle. Seven by seven. We can click off. How do we position this? How do we know where that goes? We bring in a ruler to do that and the ruler is right here. We drag the ruler in and you can see that little circle on the ruler. Put that right on the corner of the box. We can zoom right in to ensure that it's there. As you can see I don't have it but we'll grab the box by clicking on the box and moving it over and it will snap to that ruler. So now we have the ruler and the ruler will tell us where things are. In the current selection I have it selected to midpoint. It is telling us the center of this box is at this number here 30.5 millimeters and it is 52 millimeters to the center in the other direction. If we click off and we click on just the circle it gives us the same same dimensions, not the same dimensions, it gives us the same information but different dimensions. I also know where I want those holes so in this case I want the hole to be nine millimeters off of this side so we'll put nine in. It moves it to the left and we want it 11 millimeters from the end here that way so we'll click on this and as you can see when you hover over the correct number it flashes the arrow. If you go over the seven it flashes this one which indicates the diameter. So you can use that as a as a guide to tell you that you're on the right the right dimensions when you change them. So we set 11 here. That moved that to where I want it. We're at 9 and 11. That's correct. Now I need another one over here at a certain distance and I need two more down here at a certain distance. The way we do this is to click on the cylinder. Go up here to this and that is the duplicate tool. Now there's two cylinders here. It doesn't look like it but there is. To maintain the line or the distance left or right up or down we push shift first before we do anything. We push shift and hold it then push on the cylinder and start to drag. Now as you can see I can move the mouse out of the way and it will continue to stay in that straight line. Now I can go this way but as you can see, it jumps it back in line with this cylinder. We're going this way to the right, and I know that cylinder needs to be at a certain distance, so I release the mouse, then release shift, and go here and put in the number that I need. That number happens to be 52. That moves it to 52 millimeters to the right. It maintains 11 millimeters depth, and that's correct. So if we click off of it now, to make this easier I'm going to right click and I'm going to rotate up because I want to activate both of these cylinders at the same time. Left click dragging over them both. Again I'm going to pull these guys down here by duplicating them and I'm going to pull them down but I want to push shift first. Hello Atlas. Then push the left mouse button and sliding them down. Putting them anywhere. Let go. And now I can go in here and I can put the number in that I need to send them to where they need to be. And that is 93. Pushing enter and it pops them back where they belong. Clicking off of everything. And now you can see that the cylinders are in the correct spots. So they align with the bolt holes that I need. How do I make the holes in the block? Rotating up to activate them all. So I'm sliding across here like this. I don't want to touch the red box or it will activate that too. That's why I'm rotating it in a position where I can see all four cylinders and drag across like so. Now they're activated and the box is not. Grab your uppy downy arrow here, left click and drag it down until you see the cylinders exit the bottom of the red box. And you guessed it, we're going to rotate up. Now we're going to highlight everything and we're going to go to the weld tool 
and watch that thing punch them holes. The next step is to send it over to the bamboo and create that thing and see if I didn't mess up a little bit. So let's do that next. One more thing, before we send it to the bamboo, we have to export it as a file. So we'll go over here and click export. And I'm going to export it as an STL. And it goes as a download. It goes right there. And by the way, you can give it a name. You don't have to use spectacular snag net. <laughs> you can actually right click, sorry, left click and create a name for that. And we'll call it Onefinity Spacer. Oops, Spacer. And now I'll export one more time so that it has a name, an appropriate name, and I know what I'm looking for. So now when we go to our downloads, Onefinity Spacer, we click on that, double click. It opens Bamboo Studio. And right there is our spacer. Slice it. It says the slice is okay. Let's send it over to the printer. And if you stuck with me this long, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go out to the shop and see if I can hoist that thing up in the air and get those little feet under there. And we'll see if my measurements are right. Now I'm only going to do one side at a time. I'm going to lift this side, taking those screws out so as not to tweak anything. And then I can lift this thing up with some blocking and some wedges. That way I know I'm not going to tweak it out of square to test and see, boy that's heavy, if my blue block will fit. Let's give it a go here. So far so good. Look at that, right on the money. Now in order to do this, we got to have some longer screws and it just so happens that I have them. So let me go back in, print the other three, come back out, and we'll be good to go. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. Let's jack the other side up. Actually, I don't want to jack the other side up. I want to put this back down where it goes, back in those holes, and then we'll do this end. That one's perfect as well, and the holes line up. Much better. All right, one last thing. My little dust collector here, dust cover is up in the air a quarter of an inch now, so we're gonna make a little shim out of this old piece of cherry I had until I can print a new one of these. So we'll put a couple of holes on here and put it there where it goes, like so. All right, everybody, I hope you got something out of that video. Now, the main reason for doing this was for cleanliness. I know I joked around in the beginning to get Mitz's pad underneath here. Now we can, obviously. But the real reason was for cleanliness. Now, I'm not a big fan of brushing, taking the uh, air gun and blowing it all over the shop and creating dust all over everything. We have a hard enough time controlling dust in the shop without blowing it everywhere. This is what I use. It's an old broom that I took the handle off of. It works very good. Now I can get under here and I can sweep that out nice and gentle and move the dust away and not have to blow it all over the shop. Now I know what you're going to say, I could use a vacuum and that's true. But a vacuum works on high volume air movement. So the more air space I create underneath there, the more air we could get through. So yeah, we could use a vacuum, but we can now clean it with a brush and a vacuum. If you're going to do this, Make sure you use a material that's not going to expand and contract. Don't use hardwood or any wood for that matter. I know MDF, you're going to say, well, it's sitting on wood. Well, it's MDF is pretty stable, so we can't use that as an argument. Use plastic or steel or aluminum underneath here to generate these blocks. Make sure it's nice and rigid. After you put the blocks in, you're going to have to resurface the wasteboard, or at least I would recommend it, because they may be off by a little bit, and you don't want to mess up your project. 
When you make a project, you should always be surfacing the surface anyway to make sure you get a nice finished project. With that, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Give us a like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you on the next one. Now that we can clean it nice and easy.